to honor you tonight. We are just thankful to be a part of your family. You have loved us and you have demonstrated your grace in this hour on yeah. us. And, and not only so, but you have, helped, you have given us understanding, yeah. some understanding of this wonderful grace that you've given yeah. to us. Yeah. And we are gathered here before you tonight desiring to look further into this and listen carefully to you as we learn of this great love that you have demonstrated unto us through your son, Jesus Christ. I pray for this assembly here tonight, each person, dear God, that each of us will glean and learn of you, that it will be an asset to us in the sharing of the gospel or the operation of the calling that you have placed on each of us. For it is written, you have saved and called us with the holy calling. And so we desire to carry that out. And we are thankful and we bless you and we praise and glorify you for all of this. In the name of the Son, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It is it's wonderful. Go ahead and be seated, if you will. It's, it's just, you know, when you, uh, when, you des when you have a desire to do the things of God, that you know, that, that's a plus. Uh, in fact, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you just, you know, you, you want to do God's business, is that's you know, that that really just kind of places you at a whole nother level, Amen. you know, because you know you're not looking to, you're not you're not you're not trying to cut corners, you're not trying to slide around, and you know, you, you, God, I'm you, I'm open face to face yes. with God, Amen. saying, okay, here I am, and and I want just and I just want to do do what you got for me to do. That kind of an attitude really <clears throat> sets you apart. Mm -hmm. I know that's the truth because that's the, that's, that's the attitude that God gave me many, many, many years ago. Amen. You know, uh, it, it's, I, I just, I wanted to do what, what God wanted. Amen. Whatever he wanted, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Now, I didn't know a whole lot. Well, I still don't know a whole lot. But I know that I wanted Amen. to do God's business. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't interested in in in, in shortchanging God and you know trying to sneak in. I wasn't. No, that wasn't my thinking. You know, and I'm just. I I I'm, I know that. I believe that that's a blessing to be that way. You know, trying trying to just see what I can get away with. You know what I mean? No, I wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't thinking like that. No, I'm done. I don't want no more of that. I don't want no more of that. I'm finished. I'm done with that. I don't want no more of that. Yeah. I want to do what you want, Father. That's, 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 and that's been my attitude o over the years. And, and I know that, you know, God gave me that. And so, and so, and I trust that that's your desire. You know, I don't have a, an agenda. I, I don't have one. What, whatever, you know, God's will is my will. Amen. Whatever he wants, that's, that's what I want. I, I don't have no, I don't have no plan B. Yeah. <laughs> You know, just in case. I don't have one. <laughs> I don't have one. If, 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 no, no, really. If, if, if grace fail, I'm done. I, I don't have no, you know, something to fall back on. You know, because, you know, that, that could be dangerous, you know. It, 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 you know, if you are not willing to. See, see, when David took off after Goliath, he didn't have a plan B, you know. Amen. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> you either kill him or, <laughs> or you are history. Amen. When Shadrach and Meshach, you know, rebelled against Nebuchadnezzar, I'm not, by, I'm not bound to that thing. Yeah. They didn't have a plan B. They said, well, just in case. <laughs> you, you, understand the, you understand the journey that we were on? You, you don't, this is not a journey that you, that you said, well, I'm going to do this, but just in case it don't work, I'll fall. No, we don't have that privilege with the things of God. We, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have that. And, and that's what we're talking, that's what really what, what we want to be talking about, that's what, uh, what is that, in, in, which is the grace of God. It's grace when, you know, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about trusting the grace of God, trusting the grace. 
And, and, and you look at this, and the more I look at this grace, oh, God, it just keeps expanding and expanding and expanding. And I looked at, I was just looked at just one translation, the New King James, 125 times it's, it's, it's mentioned in the, new, in the New, just the New. And I'm like, whoa, man, that's trying to, you, you're really getting our attention, letting us know that this is something special, you know. And uh, so, so it, it's really wonderful. So, so learning to trust the grace and looking at the value of it, we know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and when you look at the scripture itself, the scriptures is the most important thing that we have on the earth. It's, word, it's God's word. God and his word are one. And then, but then you look at the word itself and you look at the, the, the covenant, the original covenant, the, the old, and then you look at the new. And then you look at what God said about the old. You know, he's a, you know John re really brought it out nicely when he said, you know, gr uh, 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 the law was given through Moses. Mm -hmm which is the word of God. And it's, I mean, dear God, we had that. We had that right on up until Jesus got here. And Jesus himself operated under that law. It was the word of God. It was God's purpose. It was God's purpose and plan in the earth. And it was his word that had went out unto men how to, what he wanted them to do and his purpose and his plan. And it was, you know, and, and you, would also, you, know, you would think, in fact, they, many of them thought, well, well this is it. Yeah, yeah it's it for now. Because watch this. Over in John 1, around 17, he says, the law was given through Moses, but then grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. Whoa. Now, are we baptized in the name of Moses <laughs> or in the name of Jesus? You follow what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm just, it doesn't take anything away from that I'm showing you, you know, like John the Baptist was a mighty man. Yes, amen. But he said, hey, boy, I'm decreasing. He is increasing. Hey, amen. You know, as, as valuable as he was, he was the forerunner. He came to, 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 to cut the path for Jesus. Amen. That's an important calling. Amen. Yeah, and, and his, his, his conception and his life is laid out right there along beside Jesus. So it doesn't take anything away from him. It's just that's what his job was. But then when Jesus come, well, that's just something else. So the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And so what that does for us in our time, in our generation, it causes us to take a real good look at that at this grace thing because uh, a lot of, and, and, and I know that I look at, the, we, we, you know, we see things from a natural standpoint because we, you, you really have to because you got to start looking at your natural eyes before you elevate to another level. But, but I, I, I believe that we have uh, shortchanged ourselves by not really, really, really looking closely at this grace that God has for us. Because I know the more I look at it, I, I get I get I get liber I get free. Yes. There's a liberty. In fact, the new covenant is called the law of liberty. Amen. Whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty. So so every time I look at this, I mean shackles fall off. Mm. Weights fall off for me. Ha! Yes, this is the best thing since sliced, before sliced, sliced bread don't even matter, don't even, wow. It, it's, but, but I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing, this beautiful, this grace that God has extended to us and, 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 and calling himself our father. I mean, come on, that alone. See, I, I understand, you know, do you look at lower echelon things and then you can understand higher echelon. I understand, I have a little understanding of family. I was, I was blessed to have been brought up in a, in a family, a large family at that. It was 10 of us. Yes. And, and it was my mother and my father. 
and uh, we had elbow room, and, and, and I, I understand the freedom and security of family from a natural standpoint. I understand that. I never worried about anything. I mean, we, you, know, we, 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 you know, we didn't have limousines to pick us up and take us to church, but, 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 you know, I mean, but, but my point is that there was a security within that natural household, Amen. both rooms. Yes. <laughs> you follow me? So I understand family. Now, if you don't understand family, you really need to do more studying to understand when God calls you son. Yeah. You got it because you don't know what family is. But yeah. I understand family, and I understand the security and the love and the value of family. I, I understand that naturally. Yeah, I, I mean, my, 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 my dear God, every morning I get up, mom, mom had breakfast. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Real breakfast. Yeah. Biscuits. Yeah, Hot, yeah. real biscuits. Buttermilk biscuits. Yeah. You, you get it? Y'all yeah. don't know nothing about that. You know, real, real. You know, that was, that was a daily thing, hot bread. So I understand that, you know what I mean? And, and I knew that, you know, everything was, every, uh, every, uh, every night I had a home. And, and, I, and I, you know, family, and I, was, I was, had support. That's wonderful. Then I come and I get, a, get a, you know, learn, find out about Jesus, and, and God calls us his family. So now I know that that's at a much, much higher plane than the natural, Amen. you see. And so I look, I, I can understand what he is talking about. I understand what he is trying to convey to us. And this grace is an element of that family, is a part of it. It, it operates that family. Yes, it's the love, it's the security, it's total security. It's nothing missing. It's nothing lacking. You can't fail. Amen. I couldn't fail growing up. Amen. I even tried. They wouldn't let me. I remember one day I hid my clothes to keep from going to school. I just didn't like that school thing. I'd rather play, stay home. And I didn't like that school thing. And I remember, you know, but I needed to go to school. And everybody else that was in charge, mom and dad knew I was supposed to go to school. And I didn't want to go. And so I hid my clothes. I never forget where I hid them. I know where I hid them at. I know nobody was going to find them there. I hid them. Now, any, I don't, some, none of you all know anything about an ice cream freezer, the kind of you ice cream maker, the kind you crank, put ice around it, and you, and you crank that thing. You, you don't know. Look it up. Google it. <laughs> Google old-fashioned ice cream maker. Amen. But you put ice, you put the ice, put the, put the, you make the, you make the custard, and you put it inside of this, this, this vac, vac, and then you sit it down inside of this well, this wooden bucket type of well, like, and then you put ice around it, and then it's got a crank on it, and you just crank that thing, you pull salt around it, and you crank it until that custard turns to ice cream. Oh, you haven't had ice cream. <laughs> And so this is, so I hid my clothes in that ice cream freezer. <laughs> I know nobody was going to go find them on there. And they look for them, but they know, you, know, you, know, you know, at first I'm looking for them. And, you know, it's getting closer and closer to the time for school. And then, you know what I mean, after a while, you know, mom's, you know, somebody else, mom gets, well, where are your clothes? Where are you, I mean, you know, and then, then after a while, the clothes become a priority. Yeah. Now, everybody, everybody come through to help, stop to look for help. So now it's too many people looking for these clothes. And this thing is getting serious. I better go get them clothes. So, 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 I really got them. Because I knew they were getting hot. And it was, it was a real priority. I said, oh, I found them. <laughs> My point is that, that homes, the security, that security of a home, they had your best interest at heart. And so when God calls me son, John, 1 John 5, 5, 1, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Amen. That's, ooh, 
I understand that. So I'm born of God. Over in John's gospel, when Jesus was raised from the dead, and he, the first thing he says, the message that he sent to his disciples, he said, go tell my brother, tell him that I ascend to my father and your father. Oh, wow. Boy, I know that's a priority. That, see, that's a priority of heaven. God was waiting with anticipation to release that information to us. To that's grace itself. To release it to us. Yes. Here I am a mortal fallen man and God picks me up and bring me into his house and call me son. Amen. Amen. God, you better get a hold of that. You better, and he ain't joking. He is not joking. If anybody know how to take care of the kids, God does. You think about that. You see, see when you, when you, just, just that knowing that alone should eliminate your bad, you, from henceforth you should have another, another bad day. Just to think about the creator of the universe is my father. Now, if you don't know anything about family, you, it won't bother. You would have just go, went in out the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The creator of the universe announces himself mm. as being my father. Yes, sir. Now, you, 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 can, you can read family information on the earth. Did you know on the, on the earth, uh, if, if you are a father and you do or don't do certain things, they'll jail you? If you're a father and you don't treat those kids right, you don't feed them, don't take care of them, they'll deal with you. This system, this, this earth, the system will do that. You understand that? I, I say that because we have more than we realize we have. We just kind of, the devil just kind of blow it out of your mind and you got, you got gold and you don't even know it. Just by virtue of being a member of God's family. Amen. And he called you son. Who, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Amen. Now, I say all that to say that's what this grace is. This new Entry, this new grace, this, this new era, this moving out of the law. And, and the joy and the beauty of this, the law is brutal. Yeah. And you can't even keep it, but, you got, but you, 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 there's, a, there's a demand on you, and you can't even do it. Mm, right. You know, it's a demand to do something that you can't do. Mm. Man, that's brutal. I, any way you look at it. When there is a, a demand placed on you, and you can't do it. You got to know that's tough. And I think we, I think we think we're still there. I, I, really th I, really, I really think that the, the devil has fanned some of us and told us, and you're still back there. You're still under that law thing. You, you didn't do this. And, you, and God's mad. God's going to get you too. You know, I mean, I, mean, I thought God was going to get me for years. I'm telling you. I, I, I'm telling you. I didn't, I didn't know. But that, that old system was hanging over me. You know, God's going to get you. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? God's going to get you. You know, and, 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 and that's, the way, that's the way it's laid out. You know, if you don't do this, this is going to happen. Bam. And we were jumpy, boy. I mean, we, we were jumpy. We are jumpy, boy. We were jumpy. You, you can't do it, but, you, but, but you're scared, you know, and, and, and God's going to get me. And, and, I, and, I, and I think what has happened was that we pulled some of that followed us across the grace line. And we still think God's going to get you. In fact, we tell people that. And sometimes we preach it to people. Tell them God's going to get you. And, I, and we better fix that before you get God. No, no, really, really, I'm telling you. Grace is beyond the human mind. Amen. You can't explain grace. Amen. You cannot explain it humanly. It makes no sense. And it was never designed to make sense. It's God's system 
that's above this world system. It's God's gift. It's God's gift to mankind. And after we had fallen and were separated from God, and God devised this wonderful, great plan how he was going to redeem us and bring us back into his presence, and we're going to have a happy home yes. once again. Yes. God's going to have fellowship with us. Remember, go back and, go, oh, wait, go back and read in Genesis before, before we went bad and how God and, 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 and Adam hung out. It, it had fellowship. Wow. God come down in the day and, and just, him and God just, just jawed. They had a wonderful time until it's till one day God showed up and Adam wasn't home. Yeah. And he was, where are you at? What happened to you, man? <laughs> he said, I hid myself. <laughs> you what? Uh, can you imagine that? The relationship between Adam and God and the wonderful relationship they've been had, and all of a sudden God come over to Adam's house and he and he hides. God, that is something. He hides. And we've been hiding ever since. But thank God Jesus came and fixed everything so that we don't have to hide anymore. And uh, what we need to do, we need to understand. Now, now, you don't have to really understand all of the details of the fixing. All you need to know is that you have been fixed. Amen. If you notice how God approached us, he does not approach us and require us to take this long test before we come into the kingdom. Amen. He comes to us, and the only thing he asks us to do is to believe on his son. I've already taken care of everything. You know, you know, did someone ever do something for you? And they tell you, okay, I took care of it already. Don't worry about it. And you always want to know what the detail. And they tell you, don't worry about it. I took care of it. And you're still always trying to find the detail. Mm -hmm, go. And God has told, he's telling us, he's, he's given us, he said, don't worry about it. Forget the details. I, I, I took care of it. I took care of your mess. Come on in the house. Whoever believes that Jesus is the door. He is the door. He says, I'm the door. He is the door, and all you've got to do is to come and walk in. He said, whoever stands at the door and knock, I will come in. So just the door is open. The door is there. I am the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. Come to me. And, and that, but that's all you got to do. But it just becoming out of that old system, it's not enough. And that's where the problem is, and that's what we want to talk about. Coming out of that old system, walking up, knocking on the door, coming on in the house, you know what I mean, and just saying thank you is not enough. And we just want to do something else. But I'm telling you, I'm going to give you the word of God. God said, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Just come in. And you're going to come in that way, and then, you know, you insist on paying for it. No, you're not going to pay. You're not, I'm not going to let you pay for it. Because the minute you pay for it, I know you. I made you. I know you. Yeah, you're going to get the big head. And you've got to be better than somebody else because they didn't pay as much as you paid. And I'm not, I'm not going to have another system like that. You either come in here for free, everybody's coming through the same door, going to pay the same price, which is nothing. Or you're not coming. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that, we are having a problem with that. I'm telling you, you don't realize the problem that we are having with that. Mm -hmm. But I'm supposed to tell you that you're going to have to accept it that way or you can't come in at all. Amen. That is the way. Now, Paul writing to Timothy here in 2 Timothy, chapter, 2, Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, in the first verse, he says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the nothing else. Be strong in the grace, the favor, 
the goodness of God that he has poured on you without charge. Develop in that. Peter picks it up, his writings, in the first, Peter, first epistle of Peter and the first chapter and the 13th verse, and he projects it to us in, in, in this manner. He says, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and be and rest your hope fully. Fully. Now notice what he says. He said, gird up the loins of your mind. In other words, you're, you're, I, mean, I mean, our minds are scattered. It's scattered. It's scattered. It's, 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 it's scattered. He said, get all of this anxiety, all of this work, notion all of this i got to do that get rid of all of that gird get get your mind bring it snatch it around and get it in and tell it to shut up and sit down and listen he uses the language gird up the loins of your mind i know oh dear god that's a lot that's a lot of words that's a lot of statement Get your mind right. See, ha, we have a mind that's been contaminated by you know who. And it's just, it's not right. I mean, did you ever be, did you ever be trying to mind your own business and some stupid thought has nothing to do with where you are. Has, just, 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 and you, you can be, Anywhere. You can be sitting in, in the Word of God. The word of God. You can be praying. Yeah. And this guy brings up and throw that trash over there to your mind. Mm. Peter said, get a hold to your mind. Yes, you gird that thing. You get a hold to it and stop following it. Yes, sir. Now watch this. Take this with you. This is this, this, this a little extra on the side. A thought not spoken or acted upon dies. Thoughts that come and they'll go unless you activate them. Thoughts require your participation. The devil, the devil come to you, he brings thoughts. He brings them to you. And if you don't receive it, by adding verbs to it or actions to it, mm -hmm. it dies. The scripture talks about the thought when, it, when you add verbiage and you add action to it and it becomes sin. And then when sin is fulfilled, finished, it's what brings death. But, but, it, but it, don't, it don't start off that way. See, I don't care who you are, and I can tell you, that I'll, I'll, get, I'll help you out with this. You're never going to get so spiritual that thoughts don't come. Amen. I'll help you out right now. If you, can, if you think some, one of these days I'm going to be so spiritual, man, thoughts they didn't even come into my head. Mm -hmm. Well, not as long as you're walking on two legs, I can assure you. <laughs> but, that, but see, the thoughts is, within themselves is not sin. It's, the, it's what you do with it. If you, start, if you receive it, you say, well, how do you receive it? Well, you put verbiage to it or you put actions to it. You start acting on what the thought is suggesting and you start making preparation. Ha ha. Hey, whoa. Now, 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 it's, now it's working. Well, when sin becomes, the Bible, the fact that that's the language that's used, when sin becomes full grown, she brings death. Mm. It'll kill you. Yes, sir. It'll kill you. Yes, sir. You see, but you know, but you know. So Peter said, "Girl up the lawn, get your mind, snatch your mind back in where it belongs." Ah, yes. there's times I have to really, I have to holler at the devil. Mm. There's times I really have to do that. I do it. Maybe, maybe, maybe you got yours under control. Maybe you don't have to holler at him. <laughs> but, but I have to, I have to use my mouth yes. and tell him to get your grubby ideas out of my way. Amen. I don't have time for you. 
And you know, he'll go. Because he'll have, in fact, he has no choice. You see. But you need to know that. And so that's what Peter has said. You gird up the laws of your mind. Bring your mind in sync with the word of God. And then once you do that, see, that is more of a decision than anything else. You choose to do that. You choose to bring every thought into captivity unto the obedience of Christ. You choose to do that. And then you walk that out, you see. And rest your hope. Don't ever rest your hope, confidence on anything that you can do. Rest, see the language, see what it says this? Rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. When Jesus has been revealed to you, grace is on the scene. The Bible says no man called Jesus Lord except by the Spirit. And when you do that, grace is on the scene. Because what grace does, grace comes on the scene and applies itself to a wicked, fallen mess and brings it into the presence of God and says, is she with me? He's with me. I don't know if you've ever been to a function where you had to be with somebody. You ain't had no business in there yourself. And they say, no, he with me. So they don't throw you out. See? No, 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 no. See, notice, 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 notice that. Notice, notice, notice the language. And you can always see this language. When, you, when you're reading through the New Testament, looking at grace, watch this. Look at, what it's, what, look at what Paul said to Timothy. You, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is where? In Christ Jesus. Every, ha, Jesus said, he with me. <laughs> Your safe place is in Christ. God went on to say, you know, if any man be in Christ, he is a new, this grace has elevated him, and you are secured in Christ by this grace. Paul writes to the church there at Ephesus, and he says it this way. God saved you by his grace when you believe. See that? See, notice your believing, there's no works to this. You heard and you believed. You made a decision. You didn't get off your stool. You made a decision. I believe that. And he says, God saved you by his grace when you believe. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Grace is God's gift that he gave to fallen man to redeem him and restore him back to where he belongs. Mm. Mm. Now, you ever have something you know you didn't have on business with it? It's kind of like that in a sense of speaking. Man, you know this is do good for you. But because God gave it to me, I'll take hold to it. I'll take it. I'll, just, I'll think I'll have it. I'll receive it. See, that's why you, that's why, and, and over the years, and I've, I've seen a lot of this, I've seen a lot of people that, that, that just couldn't have grace. They couldn't take it. Mm-hmm. I've seen people just back off. You know, they, they, they you know, well, I, you can't, don't do that for me. <laughs> and, 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 you know, I'm just a rag. I'm just an old, old sinner. Now, I've heard that. I don't know if you ever heard that. I'm, 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 no, and, and, it, and I don't want to just say they're a sinner, but they're an old one. I'm just an old, why do you want to be old? Mm-hmm. Amen. Me ain't been one a long time. <laughs> I'm an old sinner saved by grace. Now, that's, that's I don't know what that is. That's not, that's not a correct statement. It, it's, 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 it's two statements. It's, it's, it's not a right statement. I, I, I'm a, if I'm a son, mm. well then and how can I be a sinner? Mm-hmm. See, 
I'm going to tell you something. Satan throws a lot of cliches out here into the earth to mess us up. And that's, it sounds wonderful, and it's, it's a statement that's made under the guise of humility. Does God ever call you that? He doesn't, no, he calls you sons, his own, his own precious people. He calls you, that's the kind of stuff that he calls you. So, so but, 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 but the devil puts a lot of lingo into the mouth because your mouth is your guide to life, you know. Now, remember back, and I don't know if you, I don't know a lot of people, I don't know, but you probably deliver pretty, pretty good by now. But you remember we used to say things like, I mean, a lot of negative things. And it, and it was normal. You know, like, your feet's killing you. You are dying to go. You're killing me, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Well, well. And then, we, you know, if you say, they say, well, oh, that's just, a, that's, just a, that's just a cliche. That's just a saying. Okay, why have you ever heard about it say, my feet's giving me life. I'm living to go. You never hear that. How did that lingo get into the human language? Satan did it. Amen. Because your mouth is a guide to your life. It's a guide. You're going to, you're not, listen to me real carefully. You are not going to live above the confessions of your mouth. When, when God calls us out of darkness, Amen. he said, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, yeah. you shall be saved. Yes. You see how he, the verbiage that he goes with that, the language? Mm -hmm. You see? You, you, that's what faith, your faith, Respond, your faith responds to your mouth. Your faith, your faith responds to your mouth. You'll never have faith above your confession. You can't. You, 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 you can't. You, you, Jesus said, whoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things he said will come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he say. Amen. Amen. Jesus demonstrated it in his own ministry. He's out there, he's out there on, that, on that boat. He's in, 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 on the boat sleep. Watch this. There's a, there's a hurricane out of a raging storm out there. Uh -huh. They wake him up. Now, what, was, what is the natural thing to say? Well, you wake a man up, and he, all of a sudden you get up, he says, man, what a storm. That's what, you would, that's, what, that's, what, that's what you'd say. That's what the natural mind would do. The natural mind would get up and look and stretch your eyes and conform to everything else that's going on around that. Thing. Man, we better start bailing water. We're going to perish out here. Wow. That's the natural way. Mm -hmm. Well, they woke Jesus up in the middle of the storm. Right. What did he do? He spoke words that opposes the storm. Amen. He doesn't agree with the storm. Amen. See, see, we, oh, God help us. We think we're growing, we, and we are. We are growing, but we got a long ways to go. We don't realize how much stuff we agree with mm. instead of using your mouth to shut it down. Come on. See, it's more than just the storm. Yeah. It's everything else that's up that opposes you. Everything else that opposes you. Are you agreeing are you in agreement with all of the adversity that's going on around? And that's a question, for, not for you to answer now. Don't answer it. It's a, it's a question for thought. Mm. Are you in agreement <coughs> with all of the negatives that's going on around us right now? Come on. Come 
That's a question for you to ponder. Because see, whatever you and I, where you are, your agreement and your words is going to add substance to whatever it is, and that won't change it. But your words, you have the power of words that override anything on this natural earth. Jesus demonstrated that when they woke him up. He was not in agreement because he had anticipated going to the other side before he went down. So am I going to allow circumstances to shut me down from going to the other side? And I'm the son of God? Peace! Whoa. Man, this is above the law. This is not, this is, whoa, whoa, whoa. Them boys were shocked. All they knew, them big boys brought up under the law, man. But when Jesus stood in the face of that storm and, and said, Peace! I, I've been on the Sea of Galilee. Mm -hmm. I, I've been out there. There wasn't no storm going on that night when I was out there. I preached out there Amen. on the boat. Amen. <laughs> but Jesus was not in agreement with it. Amen. Now, it's very easy for us to say, well, you know, that's Jesus. But no, 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 no. Fast forward to 2021. What are you agreeing with and what are you accepting as the norm? What are you? I, I, that's just a question. I'm not, I'm not answering for you. That's a question for thought. Are there things that are going on that you don't like? So what are you doing about it? Are you in agreement with it? Or are you putting your word against it? It's just, it's just a, it's a statement. See, people say... <laughs> You're not going to stop growing. You, you, you don't stop growing. You, you grow until you leave here. And there's no such thing as just getting to a point and just saying, okay, this is over. I'm not going to. No, 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 no. I'm always looking to go higher, further, and deeper. I'm looking for the power of my words to elevate, not decrease. See, see that's, what this, that's what grace has given to me. God acknowledged to Paul that his grace is enough. Paul, faith man. I mean, this guy's out there doing business for him. Oh, yeah. That devil had him in a tailspin. Oh, get this devil off me. Oh, he's asked him three times to get this devil off me. <laughs> and you know what God told him? Let me paraphrase it and say it my way. Understand the grace that I've given unto you and put it to work. That's my paraphrase exposition on that statement. Understand that my grace is enough and learn about it and put it into action. And Paul got it. He caught it. Ah, I got it. I got it. Best God, when I'm weak, that's when I'm strong. Because I got grace. Yeah. I got this grace. This grace makes me strong. See, no man, see, watch this. God said that no man's going to stand in his presence and boast. Mm -hmm. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And this, I, want to, I want to read verse 29. Verse 20 is, 27, 28, and 29. Now, now, I'm going to I'm going to read this in the NLT. This is this is a powerful statement here. I'm reading it in the NLT. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish, in order to shame those who think they are wise. Now, this is this is what God does. This is the way God does business. And He chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. Wow. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. As a result, no one 
can ever boast in the presence of God. Ain't no flesh going to glory in God's presence. No flesh. No flesh. Nobody. It's going to be done to God. God has designed the system. He is not going to change it just for your unbelief. I can help. I'll help you. That. I'll tell you that right now. God's not going to change the system just for your own, just to accommodate your unbelief. Amen. No flesh is going to glory. Nobody's going to stand and beat his chest in front of God. You're going to come to God. You're going to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and then wait for Him to exalt you. I mean, you tell, you, let me tell you the most poisonous thing that can attack you is arrogance. Mm -hmm. My God, my God. If you know where arrogance is, don't you even move in that state. Move to another state. I don't even want to know where arrogance lives. I don't want to be near it. Amen. Boy, that's arrogance is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Arrogance shut down the grace of God oh, yeah. that he's given unto the humble. God exhausts the humble. Moses was, he was, was given the, the, he was a, considered a humble man. Wow. Mm. I, I, arrogance. It hangs around the church. Mm. Bad spirit. I've, I've seen some of that stuff. Mm. Mm. Run from it. Run from it. Run from arrogance. Run from arrogance. Run from it. Run from it. It's deadly. It is damnable and it's demonic. Amen. You look at what God says about it. No flesh is going to glory in his presence. You are never going to go up until you first go down. Amen. Men are trying to exalt themselves. No, no. No, no. Dangerous. Dangerous. Dangerous, 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 dangerous. No, 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 no. The calling that God has placed on you, his first step is always humility. He says it this way. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourselves. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he, I don't want to go up until God take me up. Mm -hmm. Amen. I, don't, I, don't raise, I don't want to raise me up. Amen. No, 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 no. I just, I just peep. I just peep. I'm not going up there until mm -hmm. I'm taken up there. I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not going. I don't want to because it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Self-exaltation mm -hmm. is dangerous. Oh, God is so dangerous. And it's it, because it opposes grace. Self-exaltation and arrogance is an enemy to grace. And grace is the mystery that was shut up in ages past. You read over in 1 Peter, the, the, Bible, the angels wanted to look into this thing. The prophets of old talked about this. What is this, Grace? What is this thing that God just takes a man and he don't have to do anything and love him and treat him like royalty? What is this? God was so, I mean, I, 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 see, it, I see it at Calvary. I see it at Calvary. Jesus haven't even, haven't even died yet. He's on his way out. He's right down at the wire on his way out. And God demonstrates that grace right there on that cross. Bam! Yeah. This thief mm -hmm. hanging there. Been charged and he is guilty. He yeah. acknowledged that. Jesus looks at him and said, this day. Wow. This day. You. What is you gonna make him say the sinner's prayer? <laughs> see what I mean? See how see see how we are? I don't know how he got saved. He, he didn't even repent. You see how stupid we are. You see how stupid we are. 
We're trying to bring God's grace down here at human level. God don't do that. Don't store your ignorance like that. Don't do that. Just shut up until God tell you to speak. <laughs> Just don't say nothing because it's going to be stupid. You don't, you don't know grace. It's too big for you. You embrace it. I'm of the spirit of humility. Humble yourselves down in the mighty hand of God. Amen. You come bold into the throne. God calls his office the throne of grace. Amen. The throne of grace. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Not of yourself. It's the gift of God. There is this innate thing in man's heart that he just wants to do something for this. Even though God tells us about the grace, we still sit there and bat our eyes and look at him and want to do something. Now you're not going to do a thing for this. And that's, do you know what? Do you, I'm going to tell you what our problem is. You may not like it. Our problem with grace is that if, if, we, if we submit to grace, then there's nobody, we can't talk about nobody. And we just ain't comfortable with that. Man, I, I just need to say something about somebody. But you can't receive grace and do that. There is no work. There is nothing for you to do. Everybody comes in through the same door at the same, everybody comes through the same door. And, we, and that's the part that we don't like. We are so, we are so level-minded. We are so mind. We want, we want big shots and little shots and no shots and in between shots and, and everything. We, we don't like that. We don't like this being equal thing. We don't like that. Because if I'm equal, then I can't complain about you. And I got to have something to talk about. And you know that and, that, and that is bad in the church. Did you know that, and I, and I tell you, and I'm, 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 I'm praying and working on and trying to get us out of that foolishness. You know what I mean? About, you know, we, we're so, we are so talk about people and saying negative things about people and doing it. No, 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 for by grace, we are all saved through faith. And so we all come through the same door. There is no, no, God said, be kind. He teaches us how to do it. Let grace yeah. work in your life. Mm -hmm. Let God grow you. You got to grow out of the flesh. Yeah. You got to grow out of that flesh. That thing is that thing had you had the jinx on you for all your life. Yeah. You got to grow out of that thing. In the grace. Yes. And therefore he said, grow in the grace. Yeah. Now, now you don't you get get that. He said, grow. Mm -hmm. First, first second Peter 2. 8, 3, 3, 18, grow in the grace. Get it? Grow in the grace. Now, watch this. Just the term grow itself mm -hmm. is a term that it's not something that you can naturally just look at. Yeah. Spiritual growth and physical growth, the principles are the same. Whatever it is, it is fed and it, it grows. Amen. But you can't sit there and look at it grow. Mm -hmm. you gotta, you got to get your mind away from it. Yeah. You feed and you do the things that's necessary to grow, and then you're just going about your business. Mm -hmm. Stop looking at it. You know, you know it's like the, the far, if the farmer go out and plant corn and just stand in that field all night, mm -hmm. all day, all night, looking to see when it's going to grow. He's not going to get anything else done. But I guarantee you, if he planted, I know what I'm talking about because I'm a, I grew up on a farm. If you properly plant that corn and go on about your business, sleeping right there at night and forget all about it, I guarantee you in a few days, you go you're going to see a little crack in the ground. But if you just go there and just stare at it, stare, 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 you're not going to see it. 
That's what our, we are staring at ourselves and staring at other people trying to see them grow. And if they are not at the level that we think they should be, we got something to talk about. That's what our problem is. And so then you, then you nullify the grace of God and you make it of no effect in your life because now you are doing it yourself. Now you are glorying in God's, trying to glory in God's responsibility. God help us. Don't you see how we have to do this? You got to just die. That's what he said do. You got to die to you because you're no good, you know. I have been crucified. It is no longer I who live, but the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Wow. Don't you see how this grace works? It falls, grace causes you to fall in love with God. It causes you to totally rest your hope, depend totally on him. That's what resting your hope fully in the grace of God. That's what it means, depending totally upon him. You don't have to make a way for yourself. <sighs> He's already made your way. All you got to do is just walk it out. See, see, see people, I, 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 know, I know what I'm talking about. I know this works. I know it works because it works in me. It's, it works in me. I, 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 know this, I know this the way it works. Don't, don't worry about you. I mean, dear God, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Watch this. Matthew chapter number six. Matthew chapter number six. Let's pick it. Let's read from the from the twenty fourth verse. Let's let's read from the twenty fourth verse. No one can serve two masters. Or either he will hate the one, love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and Mammon. You can't you can't go to work and have grace too. You, you can't work and have grace both. You, you can't you can't do both. Now, now I know this. I know this sound. This, that, this don't sound right to you, but because if you listen with natural ears, it won't sound right. Amen. But you can't do both. Amen. You can't. Let, let me show you a group. Does a hold your place there. This has been an age-old thing with men down through the ages. Jesus had to contend with this when he was in the earth. John chapter number twenty-eight, chapter number six, and verse number twenty-eight and twenty-nine. He was teaching out there. Jesus is ministering to the Jews. And they replied in verse 28. I'm reading this from the NLT. They replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Verse 29. Jesus told them. Now listen to this. Take this with your home. This is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. See that? You see this? See, we are caught up in this work mentality. Even after we have come into the church and gotten born again, we want to work. Now, now, now there's another side to this, and we're going to get to that. We're going to get to There is a work side there, but, but this is not, not, not now. Because, see, we want to use works so that we can boast. We want to use works because I, I'm, I'm, I did more than you did. It's not going to work. work. Works don't work that way. It's not going to work that way. It's not, I'm telling you, it's not going to work that way. Amen. You, you got to come into the kingdom. Now let, me go, now, let me go back and finish over to Matthew, and I'm going to read this, and then you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Verse 25. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, for, nor about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Amen. Look at the birds of the air. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Wow. 
They virtually had no job, no bank account, no nothing. Them things they singing to. They singing like they singing. They're just singing. They're not sad. Amen. Don't even have a job. No credit card. And they singing. God said this. I didn't, I didn't write this. We got everything and griping. Lord, help us. And still think we ain't going to make it. You see, where, you see where your faith level is? All right. Which of you by worrying can add one cubic to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lids of the fear. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet, I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Amen. Now, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Oh, boy, he attacked. See, where did he attack? See, you, where, where did your faith? You know, you know, you know, one of the biggest messages you can see is when, uh, now Jesus asked the question, where is your faith? Obviously, they're, they're short on faith. Amen. But you ever see anybody that, 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 that to say to have faith and they don't have it? Now, Jesus, no, they didn't have no faith. He said, where is, he said, where is your faith? But I say this because you, you'll, you'll run into this. There'll be those that will, that will, that, 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 that their defense is that they got faith. They're not doing well. They're not doing well. But they'll tell you they got faith. So, so if you don't have something and you think you have what you don't have, you're not going to have it because you're not even going to seek it because you think you got it. That's, I say that to, to help us. That's, that's a dangerous area. Admit that you don't have it. Acknowledge that you don't have it and seek God for it. Amen. Jesus asked the question, oh, little, oh, you of little faith, Oh, you of little faith. Why? Because you worrying about everything. You, you just, just biting, your face, biting your nails off and doing everything else. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what should we eat? Or what should we drink? Or what should we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. Now, let me, let me help you there. This is before Jesus had gone to the Gentiles. This is before Jesus was crucified. Now, the Gentiles there is classified with what we call today unbelievers. Gentiles didn't have no covenant with God. Only the Jews had a covenant. Jesus said, I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But then when grace showed up, you know, everybody got it. But now that everybody has it, there's still those that have not believed. So when he said, so, so you can look at this in this light and say, for after all, these are the things the unbelievers see. They don't have, they, they're not even looking for no faith. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Amen. But seek first what? Kingdom. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what's going to happen? Oh. Grace will take care of it all. You see, what, you see, see the value of grace? Grace will take care of it. Now, grace takes us out of the natural arena into the spirit arena. Grace elevates you. You can't understand and see grace with your head. I'll tell you that right now. You, 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 it's not, not going to happen. Remember, what Jesus, remember when Jesus came to the disciples and he said, uh, who do men say that I am? And, and there, was, there was a response that you're the Christ. Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't tell you that. My father, you're not going to wrap your mind around grace. I'll tell you that right now. You're not going to wrap your mind around grace and get a handle on grace with your natural mind. Grace is a revelation. You're going to have to attend to the word of God until God reveals his grace to you. And when God began to reveal his grace to you and you begin to understand it, oh, let me tell you, the quality of your life is going to change. Yes. God. That's the way it's come. You, you, can't, you cannot with your natural mind embrace this it's, it's because it just it can't. It's too wonderful. It's too wonderful. It's too wonderful. Grace is God. Amen. God is spirit. God is a spirit. You see, and not, your, your head is not designed to decipher spiritual things. Faith is. Faith. See, the natural mind is for the natural things, the see, touch, and feel world. In your mind, if it doesn't, if you can't, if the mind can't see it, 
if it can't taste it, if it can't smell it, if it can't feel it, it does not exist. Mm. Think about it. Anything, if, your, if your mind can't measure it, if you can't taste it, can't see it, can't smell it, can't, it doesn't exist. Think about this. If your mind went blank, you can't see anything, you can't hear anything, can't feel anything, can't taste anything, where are you? In a vacuum. The mind cannot go out there and say, well, faith is out there somewhere. Mind, the mind knows nothing about faith. But you, the born-again person, child of God, understands that. that. That's what I live by now. I don't live by my senses. I live by faith. And faith embraces grace. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. My dear friends, as we develop, now as we, you give yourself to the word of God, and as you redo this, then God will reveal himself to you. He'll reveal himself to you. And you'll grow in this. And growth is not something you can sit there and stare at and see it happen. Grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a process. It's a process. And your, your spiritual senses will pick it up. Your heart, your spirit will pick up all these things. And you'll just know things. I know more things in my spirit than my head can say. I don't have the words to, 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 to say what's in my spirit. Because my spirit is so much smarter than my head. It is. It really is. You know. But this grace is so exciting. It, it, will, it, will, it, it will cause you to just, mmm, God, mmm. And it relieves, it removes that anxieties. I hate that anxiety. You, you like it? I hate that anxieties. You know what I mean? And, it, and it, all that stuff that pisses through the mind. I hate it. I don't like it. Well, the grace of God alleviates me of that. It assures me that I don't have to worry about it. My grace is sufficient. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah. My grace is sufficient to sustain and to keep you. Father, I thank you tonight for this wonderful time that you've given unto us to sit at your feet and you feed us with your manna from on high, revealing more and more this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful grace that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I pray for every person in this room that each of us will excel and make application of the things that you're teaching us that others too will see you in a clearer way. And we'll be able to take the gospel to the lost. And those that are without will begin to see Jesus in us. And we give you the glory for that, Father. You said you are not willing that any should perish, and you desire all men to come to you. Oh, gracious Father, and we are the ones that you have placed on the earth, and you have given us this vision to reach out and to touch people. I thank you, Father, for calling us and giving us a part in this. And our heart's desire is to be faithful to that calling. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Go in peace.